Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two of my horse painting series. And in this video we're going to add more details to the eye and start doing a little bit of some refinements to the horse's nose and his muzzle. If you're interested in following along traditionally, check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the paint and canvas and brushes that I use. The app that I'm going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android. And we're going to go ahead and continue where we left off last and we're going to be blending some of the brown colors. And I'm using the Vine Charcoal um, option in Infinite Painter just to make it blend a little bit better and I don't want to kill all the different colors of brown though. You want to keep the light areas and the dark areas of the brown and we'll gradually add more refinements to those but you kind of want that for your underpainting and the underpainting is just kind of your first layer of paint when you're using acrylics and oils because you build up in layers with acrylics and oils. And then here I want to go ahead and add some highlights to the horse and you can use cadmium orange light with some burnt sienna and throw in some cadmium red light if you're following along with your acrylic colors. And you just kind of want to put those in the place where you can see the highlights in your photo reference. And as I mentioned before, I have a lightened version of my photo reference so that I can see all the structure and the muscles and um, all the veins that are in the on the horse's face. And here I'm just kind of adding a little bit of the dark now. He has like a, a vein and kind of a bone structure right there in the middle on his nose and then above his eyes there's ridges that are the eye sockets and those are a little bit darker so you want to add a darker brown there and I'm using uh, burnt umber if you're following along with your acrylics and then for the nose and the muzzle you want to um, add a darker gray on it and so I'm adding a little bit of um, some darker gray but I'm not covering up the the lighter gray colors. You want to leave the pockets of dark and light on his nose so that that shows the features of his nostrils. And then I'm sort of checking right there to make sure that I have the eyes on the same level. You have to keep doing that because sometimes when you add paint you lose your original drawing. Now I have the original drawing on a separate layer and you have to do that if you're um, working digitally because otherwise you'll be sorry. <laughs> I've done that before and if you lose your original drawing then sometimes things get really off so you definitely want that. And if you're following along traditionally kind of just do this drawing on a separate piece of paper and then trace it on and make sure that you have that um, first tracing so that you can compare it to uh, what you're painting because like I said sometimes things get uh, moved when you start adding the paint so you have to be really careful about that. And then here I'm just adding more of the um, darker colors again along on his mouth and underneath his neck there and on that uh, jaw muscle it's going to be darker too and a little bit on the neck and I'm using you can use um, uh, the Leo brush, the Vince brush, and here I'm going to go ahead and add the background. Now you can add the background first and then put the horse head on it if you want to. Uh, it works either way. Uh, but here I just went ahead and waited because I wasn't sure what color I wanted to make the background. But since there's a lot of orange in this horse and orange and blue are complements on the color wheel, uh, I'm using a blue background here and it doesn't I don't want it to look real smooth I want it to have brush strokes and look kind of painterly and here I'm just kind of messing with the uh, blending abilities on that brush and just trying to make it uh, 
blend in a little bit more but again I want sort of a rough uh, brush stroke look and that just kind of gives interest to your painting and I wanted to darken the edges <clears throat> darkening the edges uh, makes your viewers eyes stay more on your painting when you do that and so I'm just kind of working on that and, and um, if you're going to do this traditionally and you're going to add the background then definitely do the background step before you get to the final details of the horse so that way if you go over the edges of your um, horse you can go ahead and go back over that and add the final details and it won't the background won't mess up your painting so I want to go ahead and just kind of work on the shape of the eye a little bit and so I've made my um, brush really small I'm using the Leo brush and you can use your script brush or your number three round if you're following along with acrylics. And I just want to start adding the grays that are around the horse's eye. And these are the eyelids. And you add a little bit of um, some dark browns. And the lighter grays can be made with ultramarine blue and um, burnt sienna if you're following along traditionally. And you just kind of want a, a dark brown color right above the eyes. Now this is the eye socket, the, the bony ridge that's above the horse's eye. And so you want to go ahead and kind of smudge those in. And you can do this with your finger or a paper towel if you're doing this traditionally. And when you put a stroke down, you want to smudge it in if you're doing this with acrylic. If you're doing this with oil, you don't have to smudge it right away. But... You want to smooth these lines in because we're trying to make a, a painting look. We're not doing a drawing. So you want smooth edges here. And then you want to go ahead and use some orange colors for the highlights. You can use cadmium orange light with white acrylic gesso if you're following along with your acrylics. And you want to go ahead and use your photo reference to see where the light falls on the horse's eyelid. And you want to get all these little highlights because that's what gives you the structure of the horse's eye this is what makes it stand out and and look three-dimensional and real otherwise it'll just look flat so you want to add all these um, darks and lights around the eye and also you want to go ahead and adjust the the shape of the eye you want to make sure that you get the the correct shape of the eye for the horse and you just keep on working back and forth on it and here I'm adding a little bit more brown now you can't see a lot of detail on his eye in this photo but they they have brown eyes and then they have kind of a oval shaped pupil and in the middle it's kind of a, a squashed oval I guess you would call it so you want to go ahead and add that in there and since it's not um, really big detailed in the picture that we have we're just going to kind of give an indication of it and we will add the highlight at the very last so you want to get the shape of the eye correct first and here I'm just kind of widening it a little bit at the bottom just trying to get the the correct shape of the horse's eye by adding in a little bit of dark around it and you'd use sort of a dark brown and then I'm going to go ahead and and do the little vein and the the structure of the bone right there on the edge of his nose so this is the end of part two of my horse painting series and in part three we're just going to work some more on the details of the nose and the muzzle and um, on the edge of the jaw and also on the eye so if you're interested in that hit the subscribe button and thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later